Hey y'all, welcome back to the kitchen. Uh, I'm fixing to start a hot job today. It don't mean it's one that has to be done in a hurry. It means it's one that's going to be hot with jalapeno peppers. I am going to make us some of my tomato salsa, relish, whatever you want to call it. But I'm using a gallon can of bought tomatoes. So I wanted to show y'all that you can make wonderful relish with a, with a gallon that you buy if you don't have any fresh tomatoes to use. And ours didn't make a bunch this year. So the recipe calls for 30 jalapenos and you seed 27 of them and chop them up. And you only have three whole ones in there. But that, those seeded jalapenos give it such a unique flavor that it's worth it. So we didn't have jalapenos either, but Walmart did. So I'm going to sit down here at the table and seed uh, my jalapenos and get ready. And after a while, we'll be over to the stove cooking some relish. But I'll let y'all watch each step of the way so you'll know how to do some at your house. It's good with chips. It's good on beans. It's just good stuff. Okay, I just simply cut the top off of my pepper and then I slice it down the middle. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then I sometimes I scrape it out with a spoon, but I'm going to try to just cut that loose. I don't want to get any more. I don't have goggles on. I don't want that juice in my eyes. But this is what gives you your heat, that lining in the pepper and the seeds. So I'm going to get as much of that out as I can. And I was just going to give you all a little bit of watch of every step of the way. Sometimes I will get, if I'm going to be doing a bunch I'll get my peppers done and separate them in gallon zip bags and I have even frozen them and labeled them that that was 27 seeded and three whole and they were chopped and ready to go into the relish. So I have the little tool, I think I told you that already, that would go down in there and ream them out but you still have some knife work to do so I'm just going to use my knife. Troy had a blowout on his dump truck. And he'll be calling me here in a little bit to come, and it broke the brake line or something. So I'm going to have to go help him bleed the brakes when the time comes. So I won't be cooking it right now, but I'm going to get everything done that I can. And then I'll run out there, a little ways out of town where he broke down, help him get on the road again. And <clears throat> Lord, these things are hot. Okay, I'll bring y'all back. I guess when I'm chopping onions, because that's what will be next when I get these all seeded. Okay, I've got them seeded. Well, I have them and seeded them, and now I'll, actually I'll chop them in the processor in a little while. Okay, I'm going to give my onions a rough chop. It's two onions per gallon of tomatoes, and one of mine was kind of small, so I did an extra one. But I'm just going to rough chop them. Well, they're going to be a fairly small, that's okay. What I have done in the past, and what I could do, is hand chop one or two of them larger and then have the rest of them like this, smaller. I'm going to put these over in a bowl and um, do some more. And then I have to chop the peppers, and I do want my peppers small. I don't like to get a big hunk of pepper. Okay, here's my 30 seeded and uh, 27 seeded and 3 whole. I'm going to do this twice because I'm doubling my recipe. Get these out, get the others in. I don't know what it would be if they'd all been uh, with the seeds in them because I can smell the pepper as it is. But let me just tell you, seeding them gives, oh, it's such a unique flavor to this salsa. I've eaten lots of salsas in my lifetime, but when I ate this at my friend's house, I thought I'd have died and went to heaven. I loved it. I could drink it. 
So I started making it all those years ago. We would raise a big tomato garden and I would make it, but this year we didn't have, I didn't have as good a luck. And all we had was what I planted out back that y'all have seen. So let me get these done and we'll go over to the butcher block and see what all goes in my salsa. Okay, I've got my big stainless steel pot and I'm going to put my uh, ingredients in. I'm going to add in, this is 60 jalapenos because I've doubled the recipe. I've seeded all but six of them and I put them in whole. So there's the jalapenos. It calls for two onions per gallon of tomato. I added an extra onion or two because a couple of mine were very pretty small. And I always do this. Mix them up a little bit, but it's going to get mixed. You have to put everything on the stove and cook it for um, an hour. And then you jar it up. And I, I don't know if this is an approved method. I'm telling you straight up, it's my method. My friend's mother had done it for years. She, likewise, had followed her mother's method. And for 40 years, I've been using this method. You cook it for an hour, you simmer it on the stove, and then you jar it in sterile jars, and you put it in your pressure canner, and you bring it up to five pounds of pressure for five minutes. That puts a wonderful seal on the jars, and they stay, I have, I have used it five years later, and it's still good. That's your choice also, but that's just what I do. So. I'm going to open my cans of tomatoes, and these are whole peeled, so at some point I'm probably going to, well if they don't come up, break up quite a bit, I will put the immersion blender in at the end because I don't want big uh, pieces of tomato. That end goes my gallons of tomatoes. Okay, into that. The original recipe called for two and a fourth tablespoons of salt, so I've doubled that. Two tablespoons of sugar, so I've doubled that. And it called for three-fourths of a cup of vinegar, so I've got a cup and a half of vinegar. Now, I'm ready to put it on the stove and let it uh, cook for an hour. Once it starts simmering, then I'm just going to uh, let it cook for an hour. and. Um, and I'll jar it up, but I'll bring y'all back along the journey. Okay, I'm going to snip these tomatoes a little bit and get this cooking. Okay, I've got it all in here cooking. It's just on the stove, so I'll bring you back to see what it looks like as it simmers down. The relish is starting to boil, and so I've set my timer for... Uh, an hour <clears throat> and I'm just gonna let it simmer okay I've got it done I'm fixing to get my um, some of my jars out of the oven where I'm keeping them hot they're sterile and ready and we will get to canning some salsa see it's all done and ready to go so let me get some jars I know I'm gonna have one full canner and maybe more I think I'll just try to do three at a time, maybe. I'm, I'm using wide mouth pints. Get my head space right here. And you don't have to do this, but I go ahead, well, you don't have to do that either. I um, put them in boiling water because I just want to be sure that I've got everything to where to seal. And there's one. Y'all, I done got me a little bowl of this with some tortilla chips. Uh-huh. It's good. 
and I'm going to tell you, I can't tell one bit of difference from using bought canned tomatoes or if I had taken the trouble to do like I usually do and peel tomatoes and um, use fresh tomatoes. So if you want salsa or we call it relish and you uh, don't have fresh tomatoes, go to Sam's or Costco or your local grocery store and buy you a couple of gallons of tomatoes and uh, make you some salsa and can it. I've done this before but I wanted to do it where I could show y'all uh, as I was doing it. Okay, let's get the lids on these and I've got water simmering in my canner and um, I'll put these in there till I get the rest of them done. Getting hot. I think I'll use this next time. Those drawers were kind of hot. I'm going to fill a few more and then I will uh, bring y'all back when I'm done. This one needs a little bit more in it. We want an inch of headspace. These drawers are so hot from being in that oven. I keep it on about 200 and just keep them piping hot. I'm going to finish these, get them in the canner, get the rest of them done, and I'll bring y'all back and show you here in a little bit. Okay, I've got eight in there, and I'm going to put my rack which is this color, but there's nothing wrong with it. And I'm starting on the double eight more on the top. Okay, I've got my next light on eight on top of the rack, and I'm fixing to get the lid on and let it, it'll have to vent for 10 minutes, and then I'll bring it up to pressure for five minutes at five pounds. I've got my lid on, and there's not any steam coming out yet. It's going to have to it's barely a little bit. It's got to be a steady stream of steam for 10 minutes and then I'll put the weight on it and I'll bring my pressure up to 5 pounds for 5 minutes. Steady stream of steam and I'm going to let that vent for 10 minutes and then I'll put my weight on it. This is an important step. You need to get all the air out of the cooker that you can. Okay y'all, I've got the weight on and um, I'm waiting for it to build up to five pounds of pressure, and I'm going to pressure it for five minutes and let it have a natural release, and then I'll get my jars out and show you. Okay, my timer just went off, and I actually kept it at about six pounds. It pressured for five minutes. Now I'm going to let the pressure die down, and then we'll get our gorgeous jars of salsa out of the pressure canner. Okay, my thing drop down so I'm gonna get my weight off and I'm gonna I'm gonna open this away from me so I won't get a facial and I'm gonna let them sit there for a minute or two before I take them out of the uh, pressure canner we'll be right back See how pretty? Delicious. Okay, here's my pints of salsa. And here's the rest of them. I ended up getting 24, 26 pints. One of the sweetest sounds in the whole world, besides a little baby giggling and laughing, is when those jars start pinging and you know they sealed. I have had music playing over here with my jars and I love it. Now I made this video simply to reassure people that don't have a garden or you can't, you didn't have any luck with your garden or circumstances prevented a garden this year, maybe the weather, maybe family, whatever. 
buy you some gallon cans of tomatoes or diced tomatoes. Mine were whole tomatoes. <clears throat> the recipe simply calls for a gallon of tomatoes. So I made this recipe exactly like I make my salsa with fresh tomatoes with a whole lot less work. My husband tasted of it just a little bit ago and he said, so we really only need to grow enough tomatoes to eat, don't we? I said, well, we can have salsa whether we have a bunch of tomatoes to harvest or not because this tastes identical to fresh tomatoes. I cannot tell any difference. So just know that if you want to make salsa, you don't have tomatoes and the farmer's market doesn't have any, get you some gallon cans of tomatoes and make salsa. And here's another thing, if you don't pressure can, you can hot water bath this if you don't have a pressure canner, but I love doing it in the canner because it gets such a good seal on it. And another thing, if you don't can, you're not a canner, you don't have a pressure canner, get you a gallon of the tomatoes, follow the recipe, and put it in some jars in your ice box till you eat it all up. It doesn't take long to eat it. They've done eat a pint sitting over there with some chips just now, just checking it out for me. And it, it passed. Great approval record. So even if you wanted to make some of this for Christmas gifts, back to the Christmas in July thing, you can make this the 1st of December by buying a gallon of tomatoes. Onions are readily available and you can get the jalapenos year round, like I said, here. Now, I don't know about where you are, but I could make this any time of the year using the canned tomatoes rather than fresh ones. I have made it also when they put the Roma tomatoes on sale for like 69, 89 a pound. I would go get me 10 or 15 pounds of Roma tomatoes and make salsa out of them. But y'all, it sure was easier. So keep that thought under your hat in case you need it. You can like the video so you can come back when you go to your liked videos this one will pop up you won't have to go back through all of mine to find it so if you'll like it and share it i sure will appreciate it and let me know if you try it the salsa has a very unique flavor the the seeded jalapenos just give it a different flavor than just cutting a jalapeno up in there for a little bit of heat it is absolutely wonderful so let me know if you try it and what you think about it. And if you have any neat and unusual recipes that you make for your family, please share them with me via email. And I will use them and I'll tell everybody where I got them. I hope y'all have a good weekend. The good Lord bless you. Come back here next week for some more good recipes.